Old Testament manuscripts. Another feature of this period is that a sufficient number of manuscripts is preserved <clears throat> to give an immediate knowledge of the text. The Hebrew Bible manuscripts may be divided into two classes, the public or sacred, and the private or common. The first were synagogue rolls, and have been prepared so carefully and watched so closely, men have spent their entire lifetimes in adulthood to preserve the, the text of God's word. Watched so closely that the intrusion of variants and mistakes was hardly possible. But they contain only the Pentateuch, or the Pentateuch with five megaloth, or rolls, Song of Solomon, Ruth, Lamentations, Ecclesiastes, Esther, and also the Haptheroth, in the text of the Masoretes without their additions. These manuscripts are, for the most part, of recent origin, although antique in form, being written on leather or parchment. The private manuscripts are written on the same material and also upon paper in book form, with the Masoretic traditions more or less complete. It is often difficult, indeed impossible, to determine the date and country of these manuscripts, but none of these are known are really old, very old. But none of those now known are really very old. The oldest authentic date is 916 AD for the codex containing the prophets with the Babylonian punctuation and 1009 AD for the entire Bible, both of which belong to the Furkowitz collection in the Imperial Library at St. Petersburg, Russia. According to the most Recent investigation, the MS, or Orient, 4445 in the British Museum, containing Genesis, Genesis and De Deuteronomy, a few other things, may be a little older. As a rule, the oldest manuscripts are the most accurate. The number of errors that crept in, especially in private manuscripts, where again, they didn't pay attention to detail in the way that they thought. People probably thought these guys were nuts, but no, that's the product is accurate then. So the number of errors that crept in, especially in private manuscripts, were pre which were prepared without all that oversight, without any official oversight, awakened solicitude and led to well-directed efforts to get a pure text by means of collating good Mazara manuscripts. See, so the people were paying attention to details. Some didn't. In this line of la the labors of Mir Halevi of Toledo, in his work of the Pentateuch called the Masra, the Hedge of the Law, are celebrated. People spent their entire lifetimes in a little room with a candle and a little pen of some sort and made attempts to preserve the value and the accuracy of the text. The printed text. <clears throat> now the art of printing opened a way of escape from copyist errors. There you go. And it was taken very early. The Psalter was printed first at Bologna in 1477. There's this location over here. The first complete Bible at Sonsino in 1488. Gerson's edition, all these others. Substantially, the same text is contained in the first edition of Bomberg's Rabbinic Bible. Also in the editions of Robert Stevens and of Sebastian Munster. Get my other glasses back on. The second independent edition derived from manuscripts is that in the we call it the Complutinian <coughs> polyglot. <coughs> See, uh, the text has vowels, but no accents. The third important recension is contained in the Biblia Rabbinica Bombergeniana. It is edited, edited according to the Masera, which the editor first revised, and contains the entire Masoretic and Rabbinic apparatus. They want to make sure details are transferred made put forward in time. <clears throat> it is more or less reproduced in prints published during the 16th and in the beginning of the 17th centuries. Besides these original recensions, editions were published having a mixed text. The Hebrew text of the Antwerp polyglot, which is followed by the small editions of Plantin, the Paris and London polyglots, and the editions of Rhine Thysius is based upon that of the Complutensian and Bomberg. So 
They're really, really doing their homework continually. Another recension is represented in the editions of Elias Hutter, Buxdorf, and Joseph Matthias with preface of J. Lustig, for the, which the same, some very ancient manuscripts were collated. <clears throat> so we can go back in time, if you're a scholar, and want to see how this wonderful Old Testament was preserved. We'll have all these different men's works spent hours and hours and hours, years. Matthias's, Zablonsky, Von der Hoot, and so on. <coughs> Critical works and commentaries. <clears throat> None of these editions presents the Masoretic text in its original form. The large collections of variants by these people, more especially the Rossi, and so on, are valuable for some extra Masoretic readings which they offer but they are less valuable for critical purposes. More important, more important for text critical purposes are, these are these works here, all these people around the world, around the world. A great service with the publication of the works of the oldest Jewish grammarians, lexicographers, and the discovery of fragments and publication of codices like that on the prophet, prophets of the year 916, the fruits of these preliminary works are contained in the correct editions of the Masoretic text by Baer and Ginsberg. Baer, who was assisted by Delich, published the Old Testament with the exception of Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and so on. Look at Ginsberg. His edition is entitled The New Masoretic Co Critical Text of the Hebrew Bible. It should be studied with the same author's indispensable introduction the Masoretico Critical Edition of the Hebrew Bible in 1897. Look at all these works. And we look at them and find minor differences. Valuable as such correct editions of the Masoretic text are. They represent only a single recension all over the place. So we have all kinds of information to see what kind of Bible we have. Whose source is the Textus Receptus mentioned above, which was fixed in the first Christian centuries. With this recension, the text-critical and exegetical treatment of the Old Testament cannot be satisfied. Before the received text was made canonical, there existed different forms of the text, which in many stood nearer to the original than that sanctioned by the Jews. But there's always something available. The main witness here is the Septuagint, a correct edition of which is an absolutely necessary, though extremely difficult task. Because that was in but 3 or 4 B.C. And we compare that often when we have problems with the texts uh, that we have in our collections. Go well, back there, we resolve issues. But Old Testament textual criticism cannot be satisfied with a comparison even with this older form of the text. In many cases, the corruption of the text is so old <coughs> that only a criticism, both cautious and bold, can be approximate to the original genuine text. In modern times, some very important contributions have been made, and we have these here. Notes on the Hebrew text of Samuel London, and so on. Look at all these. So many people from all different parts of the world came together, and what do we have? Well, let's check into that. Now, why do you think I read that? I want to see who did what over the centuries. We got a good picture of that. So, Old Testament manuscript evidence. I did this study, it comes from Josh McDowell, Evidence That Demands a Verdict. Excellent work. His people, a whole committee of, of people, went through what I just read one article and after over and over another, checked on things. The bibliographical test for the reliability of the Old Testament. And I didn't mention something that came to my mind, which probably will be in this article too. You go in the New Testament, and they quote the Old Testament. They quote it in Greek. Wow! So we've got those, and how many other uh, pastors and teachers and scholars throughout the year, years quoted their versions of what they had, in, and, and we find there's hardly any consequent uh, variance that we have to say, okay, we just don't know what this the Bible said, what what the original text probably said. 
What does God want you to do? Study to show yourself approved. When you get to the point where I studied years ago of wondering what the real Bible is because everybody had their own ideas. Oh, you have to only use the King James Version. Well, what happened in, uh, in 3 B.C.? I mean, King James is only 1611, 1600 years later. And all this stuff in between these people, God has seen to it that people will make an effort to preserve the text, albeit nothing is going to be perfect, but albeit you keep studying, you're going to get to the point where it obviously says what it says. Number two point is, besides extra biblical evidence and the New Testament people, authors quoting the Old Testament, is uh, we see the corroboration from one version to the next, of one passage to the next in any Bible that we have, we find <clears throat> there are no errors or contradictions, and the logical conclusion would be the harmony, not the disharmony. In the case of the Old Testament, we do not have the abundance of close MS authority as in the New Testament, as we discovered. Until the recent discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls, the oldest complete extant Hebrew MS was around 900 A.D., this made a time gap of 1,300 years. Hebrew Old Testament completed about 400 B.C. Josh McDowell writes, If no other evidence were available in the case for the fidelity of the Masoretic text could be brought to rest with a confidence based upon textual comparisons and an understanding of the extraordinary Jewish scribal system, which we just got a wind of here. But with the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls beginning in 1947, there is almost overwhelming substantiation of the received Hebrew text of the Masoretes. Critics of the Masoretic text charge that the manuscripts were few and late, though the Dead Sea Scrolls earlier, through the Dead Sea Scrolls, earlier manuscript fragments provide a check on nearly the whole Old Testament. Those checks date about a thousand years before the great Masoretic manuscripts of the 10th century. Wow. Before the discoveries of the Cairo Geniza and the Dead Sea Caves, the Nash Papyrus, a fragment of the Ten Commandments and Shema, dated between 150 and 100 B.C., was the only known scrap of the Hebrew text dating from the before the Christian era, but we still had the Samaritan Bible and the Septuagint, 100 or so, 200 B.C. as well. With the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls, a number of Old Testament manuscripts have been found which scholars date before the time of Christ. When the facts are known and compared, there is an overwhelming abundance of reasons for believing that the MSS we possess are trustworthy. We shall see, as Sir Frederick Kenyon put it, that the true Christian can take the whole Bible in his hands and say without fear or hesitation that he holds in it the true word of God, handed down without essential loss from generation to generation throughout the centuries. And the in the direst of times, and the least, those the people least concerned for the preservation of God's word, it nevertheless found somebody somewhere all over the planet to preserve it. First, in order to see the uniqueness of the scripture in its reliability, one needs to examine the extreme care in which the copyist described, transcribed the Old Testament MSS. History of the Old Testament text. Rabbi Akuba. 2nd century A.D., with a desire to produce an exact text, is credited with saying that the accurate transmission, the Masoret, of the text is a fence for the Torah, a fence around preserving it. In Judaism, a succession of scholars was charged with standardizing and preserving the biblical text, fencing out all possible in introduction of error. And we have the Soferim, from Hebrew meaning scribes, were Jewish scholars and custodians of the text between the 5th and 3rd centuries B.C. Zogath, pairs of textual scholars, were assigned to this task in the 2nd and 1st centuries B.C. And then we have the Tananam, repeaters or teachers, were active until A.D. 200. In an adding addition to preserving the Old Testament text, the work of Tananam can be found in the Midrash, textual interpretation, so Sefta edition, and Talmud instruction, the latter of which is divided into Mishnah, repetitions, and Gemara, the matter to be learned. 